Remember this, for if ever a fruit ripens, it should be planted, lest the line die out of the world. Here it has lain, hidden on the mountain, even as the race of Elendil lay hidden in the wastes of the north. Yet the line of Nimloth is older far than your line, King Elisar. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today I bring you all a video on the history of the White Trees, the symbol of our channel. But today we will discuss not only the ones of Gondor, but the ones across Arda at large. There will be articles and videos related to the White Trees in the description and cards, so please check those out. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. For a more hopeful video to contrast to last week's, please relax as we discuss the history of the White Trees of Arda. Our story about these plants of Arda truly start back with one of the two trees of Valinor, Telperion the Silver Tree. While Laurelin is just as important, it was a tree of gold, and would perhaps be more alike to the Malorn trees of Lothlorien than alike to the White Trees. These two trees first flowered roughly 3,500 years after the beginning of the world. Telperion, whose name was unclear but contained the Quenya word for silver, was the elder of the two trees and was considered to be the male mate to Laurelin. It was created by Yavanna and bloomed during the first part of the Valiant Day, when its dark green leaves shone silver beneath. Along with the rain from Laurelin, the dews of silver that fell from Telperion were hoarded by Varda and put into great vats like shining lakes. These silver dews from the vats of Telperion would later be made into stars by Varda, giving light in the dark sky that the elves beheld and revered, which also challenged Melkor. Melkor would of course destroy the first white tree, Telperion, during the darkening of Valinor in 1495 with the aid of Ungoliant. Speaking of the elves, after they came to dwell in Valinor during the years of the trees, Yvanna would make for the Noldoran elves of Tyrion, Galathilion, a white tree in the image of Telperion, as of all things in Valinor the elves most loved Telperion. Galathilion, meaning white tree in Sindarin, would be alike to it, except it would give off no light of its own, but it would grow beneath the tower of Mindon, and it would have many seedlings in Eldamar, and this tree would be the sire of the white tree Celeborn, whose name meant Tree of Silver. This tree grew in Tol Erisea, the island of the Teleri off of the coast of Amon, and would be the sire of Nimloth, White Blossom in Sindarin, the White Tree of Numenor. Nimloth the Fair's history began in the Second Age, when, after Numenor was raised out of the sea for the faithful Dunedain, the elves of Tol Erisea, in friendship with the men, gave them this sapling of the White Tree. During the glory days of Numenor, it was tended with honor and care for it was a symbol of friendship between men and elves, and blossomed in the king's court of Armenolos in Numenor. As the sun set upon Arda, the blossoms came forth from the tree, its fragrance bracing the night air. But as Numenor darkened, the king's men grew to hate elves and lust for immortality themselves. Nimloth became a symbol of that which those evil men despised. Under King Adunakor, the tree was untended and fell into decline. One of the late kings of Numenor, Tar Palantir of the Faithful, would tend to the tree once more, foretelling that the fate of the White Tree and its lineage was bound with the lineage of the kings of Numenor. When the White Tree perished, so too would end the line of kings, a powerful prophecy indeed. This would be so, for though King Arpharazon was advised by Sauron to cut down the tree, and the king would for a time not do so, remembering this prophecy of Tar Palantir, he eventually did so. And in 3262 of the Second Age, the white tree Nimloth the Fair was slain and felled, and its wood was used to light the first flames in Sauron's temple to Morgoth. The smell of it was terrible, and a great cloud went above Numenor for seven days before departing into the west. This Numenorian line of kings was doomed, its days numbered. However, the night before Nimloth was destroyed, Isildur, son of Elendil of the Faithful, snuck into Armenolos and the courts of the king, which were barred to the faithful, and he went into the court of Nimloth, which was made illegal by the edicts of Sauron. While the guards who watched the tree day and night were dormant, Isildur took a fruit from the white tree, defying the evils of Sauron to preserve the symbol of the faithful. The guards were aroused, and Isildur had a great fight, being nearly slain in the process, but in the end his disguise saved him from further persecution, and he delivered the seedling into the hands of Amandil, his grandfather, who blessed and planted it. Asildor, who had almost perished during his time of rest from his wounds, rose when the sapling's first leaf opened, and his wounds no longer bothered him. During the downfall of Numenor in 3319, the line of the kings of Numenor would indeed come to its end in Arpharazon's failed invasion of Valinor. 
but the lion's offshooting branch in the line of Elendil and Isildur would survive, just as the white tree had perished, but a seedling of it survived, for Isildur brought the surviving tree with him into Middle-earth. After coming to Middle-earth and establishing Minas Ethel and Gondor, Isildur planted with honor the seedling before his house. But it would not remain there long, for the scourge of Numenor, Sauron, returned to Middle-earth, and in a surprise attack that began the War of the Last Alliance in 3429, Sauron again burned the White Tree after capturing Minas Ithil. But just as the line of kings went on, the line of White Trees did as well, for Sildor and his family escaped Minas Ithil, and he took with him another sapling, this time from his own White Tree, which had been the first White Tree of Gondor and had become a part of its banner. A White Tree under seven stars and a crown when there was yet a ruling king, without a crown when there was not. This sapling, the second white tree of Gondor, would be planted in Minas Anor in the year two of the Second Age. Asildor planted his sapling here in memory of his brother Anarion, for this was his city, and he had fallen during the siege of Barad-dûr during the war. Sauron had tried and failed to wipe out the line of kings, and the survival of the white trees was a testament to his failure and our hope. The hope of men would never give way, and Tar Palantir's foresight was still correct. In this way, Isildur perhaps defied Sauron more than any other man in the history of Middle-earth. However, dangers and death still opposed men, for during the Dark Plague of Middle-earth in 1636, the White Tree of Minas Anor was slain in the Pestilence as well. After those dark days had passed, the new king Tarondor planted the third White Tree of Gondor with a new sapling. This one would survive long, until 2872 and the death of the 21st ruling steward of Gondor, Belag Thor II. It depicts the continual fall into despair of the kingdom of men during the Third Age, and since no other sapling could be found, the dead tree would be left standing until the king comes. Indeed, 59 years later, in 2931, that king would be born. The dead tree, left standing in the court of the Fountain of Minas Tirith, would stay until after the final defeat of Sauron in 3019 of the Third Age. And the King Elisar came to the throne of Gondor. One night, Gandalf had led him out of the city, and they climbed high upon Mount Mindoloin behind Minas Tirith. In the early morning, Aragorn spoke with fear for Gondor, for Aragorn would eventually die. And who would govern it then if his wish about Arwen was not granted? Just as the white tree in the courtyard was barren, when would he see otherwise? Gandalf told him to turn away from the green world and look where all seemed cold and barren. And then he saw it. Crying out in the high tongue of Quenya, Aragorn beheld a sapling of the white tree which had survived the deep frosts of the Third Age, just as the line of a sealed door had in the north. The sapling was not yet seven years old. Some fruit of the white tree must have been planted high up in that place long ago, just as should be done whenever there was such a fruit to be planted. With reverence and care, Aragorn carried the sapling back to Minas Tirith, and the old tree was removed from the court and laid to rest alongside the kings of Gondor and Rath Dinan. Soon after, the tree was in bloom and Aragorn took this as a sign, knowing his wedding to Arwen would not be too far off then. It is very interesting, if I might remark, for even in the hour that Aragorn and Arwen were betrothed in Lothlorien, it is stated that Arwen stood like a white tree looking to the west, so in some ways the white tree referenced her as well, for it would be Arwen after all that would go on to give birth to the next king in Isildur's line. And so this fourth white tree, planted by Aragorn, King Elisar, would go on to live in peace during the Fourth Age, for the line of kings was strong once more. And so, we come to the end of our tale about the White Trees of Middle-earth. From this tale about the White Trees, we see that even when despair and hopelessness seem inevitable, they are not. There's always hope. For as Bilbo wrote, deep roots are not reached by the frost, and the crownless again shall be king. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you all enjoyed today's video on the white trees. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections about the white trees? Let me know in the comments below. I love the white trees, of course. They are the greatest symbols of hope in the Legendarium. I want to shout out our Valar tier patrons, Adrian De La Torre, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putin, and Mark Kralik, Blair Scout, Tobias Goldner, Merton, John Hume, Tom Bombadil, Ridgey93, Jennifer Wood, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Quantum Catalyst, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, and Kondar, our newest Valor tier patron who came in with a very generous donation. Thank you all so much, and thank you to all of our patrons. It means a lot. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with an epic character history of your choice. I've put a poll up in the community tab. Everyone, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Till the next one, my great friends.